Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Zemphira from Zemphira Games and this is another episode of the Desert Wildlife Park. And this is also the last episode of the Arid Animal Pack. We are building the last habitat for these animals and today's episode is the Black Rhino. So in case you are interested interested in seeing also the other uh, arid animals go ahead and check out my channel they are all under the playlist of the desert wildlife park so let's get started So for this episode as I said we are building the habitat for the black rhino um, and in this episode we are just building the outside area and the viewing gallery for the guests. As you can already see in the background there is a pretty ginormous building. This is going to be a rhino and elephant house um, which is built in like a temple style and which is used to um, give the elephants which are coming also soon to the desert wildlife park and the black rhino a indoor habitat um, where they just can go in um, as they like for like a little cooler place when it's getting too hot outside or also to act as a holding pen for the animals um, just in case like the outside habitat needs to be cleaned or the animals need to be separated in some way so it also acts as a holding pen and of course we also have a backstage area and also a like shelter for uh, the animals in this building but you won't see me do this building in this episode um, I will probably do the African elephant episode next and then you are going to see the inside of the elephant or rhino house or not just the inside but how I built this whole building because it is still not quite finished. I am trying to do it as detailed as possible and that since it is all uh, also very big um, it's just taking quite a long time I started building um, this house before I started building the habitat uh, simply because I needed to figure out where exactly the building is gonna be so I know where exactly I can build the habitat because I was just a little scared if I would have started to build the habitat I didn't really know to what point I can do it um, and it might not fit or I don't know so to make the habitat uh, as a whole in a video I decided to make the building beforehand then do uh, the uh, two habitats for the elephant and the rhino and then finishing the building or maybe even finishing it in between those videos and then I'm gonna plop out that video for you after the both habitats are finished so you can be really excited I am uh, pretty proud of this house even though there is some stuff that I need um, to remake because I just found some um, like informations online uh, from a, another uh, guy on a Planet Zoo Discord that I was talking to and he sent me some stuff where I could read some uh, like requirements like real life requirements for these animals and then I found out that I was pretty close with what I was doing in this house um, but maybe not close enough for like a full realistic thing so I need to redo some stuff for the uh, backstage for the shelter so uh, yeah there's still quite a lot of work to do and as you might see in the cinematics or just during the um, video the building still doesn't have a roof because it is always just easier to build things inside of a building if you do not have a roof uh, so uh, yeah 
that's why the roof is gonna be the last thing that I'm doing so it might not look uh, too pretty right now but just don't pay uh, too much attention uh, on this building maybe just the uh, outside but uh, yeah but we are not here to talk entirely about the uh, rhino and elephant house we are here to talk about the black rhino and its habitat for this habitat i really wanted to give the animals a lot of space um, they are pretty big um, they only want to be housed with a maximum of three animals with one bull and two cows and that's what i also wanted to do for this habitat um, so it is fairly big um, and i wanted to do uh, this um, almost like a moat or like a at least the habitat is lowered in front of uh, the barrier um, and there I also wanted to give the rhinos quite a big of a uh, water hole so they can take a little bath and uh, a drink and stuff like that they also need uh, some water for their skin um, and stuff like that so that's why I did the water hole in front of the barrier so the guests can have a really nice view like over uh, everything uh, it is a little uh, raised platform here too uh, what i'm building right now in uh, this shot uh, and yeah and i also wanted to have the possibility to um, separate uh, the habitat into two or like divide it into two to separate uh, the cows from the bull because um, rhinos are normally more of a solitary animal so what that means is that they don't uh, walk around in herds uh, like maybe some hoofstock uh, or ungulates or i don't know um, so they normally don't walk around like a female and a male with maybe the calves or stuff like that normally it is just the cow with its calf or maybe just um, like smaller groups i believe but not really with males um, so i wanted to have the opportunity to separate the male from the females uh, also maybe when they have uh, babies that the male is not in the same area but that the male can still have a really a nice uh, habitat inside and outside for itself in case it needs to be separated or i don't know maybe even a cow needs to be separated from uh, the other cow and the bull uh, so we have many opportunities uh, to separate the animals of course we have two halves for the outside part and also we have uh, a lot of opportunity to separate the inside parts but that uh, you will see in another episode um, for this habitat i also wanted to make the water hole uh, like laid out with uh, like concrete uh, but uh, here i used uh, these mud walls because i just like uh, the look of them a little more and uh, the colors but i mean you you get the idea right um, so it is like laid out um, with something so that the water doesn't like run through uh, the the earth or the sand um, and gets like lost <laughs> if you know what i mean um, i will probably do that with other animals too i've already did that with the porcupines uh, that are in the desert house which is another building in the zoo um, and i will probably also redo the water areas for the dama gazelle and the edex and those animals that i already have because uh, uh, their water holes are not laid out with like concrete and whatnot um, and it's not like a full um like realistic uh pond if you know what i mean but i mean we are in a desert and um water is not like a i don't even know how to call but the resource uh can be pretty hard to get i mean in in the wild of course not in the zoo uh but i think you know where i'm going i don't even know how to explain it to be honest uh but yeah that's what i thought um 
And I also used the little decal pieces, these um, moss stickers almost, and recolored them um, in the color of the sand or the earth that we have in this biome as, uh, as closely as I could get it to um, give the feeling that of course the animals would um, have some dirt and some sand uh, on their feet and on their body and if they go into the water the sand would of course also be in the water um, and on the edge so I just try to recreate it that of course it is not like a hundred percent clean and there will be some dirt also in the water so I just recolor these pieces and put some in there and also recolor the water itself um, in this uh, like a little bit dirty but uh, also in like more of a sandy color the normal dirt water color is more like really brown and here I use more of like a little bit orangey beige color and I really like that um, so yeah that was my attempt to do this as like not realistic for the wild where it would look like but more on a realistic way how it would look like in a zoo um, because sometimes I want to make things like as realistic as possible but thinking about the zoos they don't always represent the nature a hundred percent and um, like a realistic zoo habitat might be not as pretty as a like normal wild um, area habitat uh, you know what I mean um, so I sometimes just want to try to recreate how it would look like in a real zoo even though it might mean that it is maybe not as pretty um, but it will definitely be more realistic and that was uh, or is what I'm trying to uh, go for so yeah that <laughs> were my choices for this habitat and also hopefully for the future I just need to remember these things sometimes I simply forgot uh, forget these uh, from time to time but um, I'm still learning as I do uh, those videos for you so uh, we can learn together you know <laughs> um, and since the animals are like really strong they are normally uh, more of like a gentle giant um, but of course uh, those are really really strong animals and that's why I also wanted to protect the trees um, I saw that was basically all the habitats um, that I saw in real life or from photos and stuff like that on the internet um, that the trees are not directly accessible for the animals they are um, either no real trees or just dead trees um, in the habitat or they are like uh, fenced in as like uh, I did it here uh, or there were like a lot of rocks around the tree so that the rhinos cannot access the tree itself so that's what I also did here but I used the fencing in the middle and what I'm doing right here is like the barrier for the animals so behind this little area uh, where the rhinos can't access anymore I just did quite a lot of foliage and also some trees to still give the habitat um, more of a natural vibe and also a little bit more green because all rhino habitats that I've seen are normally really really bare or naked um, yeah that's probably because the rhinos just eat everything or maybe destroy stuff so they're normally pretty like just earth or sand and then some rocks and um, some dead trees and some enrichment items and that was basically it um, so yeah that's why I chose to do some uh, foliage on the outside so it still looks pretty you know and then I use these logs um, so that the animals cannot go through. They are pretty big animals, so uh, yeah, they um, will be pretty well hold back by these logs. But um, I mean, normally the rhino wouldn't just go there and like 
I don't know, try to destroy it because as I said they are pretty gentle uh, animals and not really aggressive or stuff like that. But I mean we still need it to be like 100% safe so that guests can stay safe and in case maybe like one of the animals would panic or stuff like that. They are just insanely strong. Um, so yeah. That's why I also did these little uh, hot wires, this electric fence in front of the logs to just make it a little extra safe so that the animals would not go up there. And of course we have um, this rock wall uh, what the animals could not pass uh, because they are just not really like mobile. <laughs> If you know what I mean, they can't really climb um, those rocks. Uh, so yeah, we have like a triple barrier here. And I um, might also do another fence uh, behind the rock wall um, that is like higher and really sturdy. Um, I don't know if it would be necessary with the kind of barrier that we have right now, but uh, just to make it like extra safe, I um, also might ask some people uh, in the discords uh, that I am in to ask if it would be necessary, if it would be realistic and stuff like that. Um, so yeah. And as I promised you in the last episode with the sand cats, I want to incorporate some more of like facts um, about the animals that we are currently building a habitat for. Um, so why not just let get started and talk about the black rhino. Um, the black rhino uh, is another African rhino species next to the white rhino, uh, but uh, their names black and white rhino uh, do not come from their color. Um, even though they are called black and white, they are both gray, um, but they are pretty easy uh, to tell apart because the black rhino has um, more of a hooked lip. Uh, and the white rhino has more of a square lip. So uh, next time you're watching um, like a documentary or uh, seeing photos or maybe be in game and see the animals, just pay attention to that little detail. Uh, so it will be very, very easy for you uh, to tell these two species apart. Also, the black rhino is critically endangered. There's only around 6,000 thousand um, animals left if I'm correct um, and of course they are also hunted um, because of their horns. They um, have two horns, they have one pretty long horn um, in the front that can be up to one meter and 40 centimeters long which is pretty long. Uh, I'm like 1 meter 65 um, high, um, which is like 5 feet 4 or 2, I don't know. Um, and thinking that the horn is just like 25 centimeters less big than I am, that is pretty big. Um, and they also have a smaller horn. Um, like behind that big one. And also females normally get a longer and a little thinner horn and the males have normally a little shorter but thicker horns. And in case you don't know, uh, those horns are made out of keratin, which is um, the same as our fingernails and as our hair. So it doesn't really have any properties as some uh, cultures believe. So there is no like property to taking these in any kind of medicine, um, but they are still being poached and killed uh, for their horns, sadly. So uh, that's also one big part why they are critically endangered, sadly. While talking about their horns, the babies are actually born without any horns. I think you can guess why. <laughs> but after around one to two months, they will start to develop a little 
a little stumpy horn um, on their nose and that's when they start growing their horn. Also um, rhinos are really really good mothers as I uh, have read so the cows, cows really protect their offspring and are really good mothers and if I remember it correctly with black rhinos they normally walk up front of um, their calves and white rhinos actually walk behind their calves so uh, that was something that I found really interesting that's just like a little detail um, but I don't know I just really liked it and also uh, there is another little like uh, difference between white and black rhinos the a black rhino as I told you has like a, a pointy and hooked lip so they like to pluck their food off like trees bushes and shrubs um, so they're really well uh, evolved to uh, do that and the right rhino um, is more like uh, a browser as I uh, read that correctly so they mostly uh, eat grass actually um, just due to their uh, shape of the lips uh, so that's another thing that um, is like different between those species even though you would think that they are pretty similar and these animals also tend to uh, take a little nap uh, in the midday when it is at the hardest um, and possibly go into shade and just take a little nap so that's why they also require um, to have a shady place in their outside area so that what uh, we will do in a couple of minutes to build them um, um, a little area where they can still have some shade even though if they are on the outside area in the outside area I mean they could also of course go into the indoor part but as I said maybe uh, they are like cleaning the inside part um, the inside area and since they might don't want to be <laughs> in the habitat uh, where the rhinos can access them um, they can like uh, close the doors to the outside area where the rhinos would be um, and so they can still have some shade outside even though uh, well yeah not even though but in case uh, the uh, inside is closed for them so that's what we also do and uh, back to the video uh, here I am doing this little outside sliding door as I said I want to have the opportunity um, to separate or, or to divide the outside area into two parts uh, in case one of the animals uh, needs to be separated from the herd so uh, that's what I try to do here I still wanted to keep it as pretty as possible so I decided to use these wooden locks um, for one part uh, of the sliding door for when it is open so that the door itself can be hidden behind uh, those wooden logs I, that, I just thought that it would look a little more pretty than uh, it being just bare and open uh, and visible for the guests and I um, did like a pretty heavy metal door for here as I said they are gentle but you still want to keep everything sturdy just in case anything happens the animal uh, it's like uh, having a panic attack or stuff like that so they just have a lot of force uh, they can put against uh, like this kind of door or anything like that so we want to have it extra secure so we're using pretty thick metal for this part and um, also for like the outside frame it is like even thicker metal uh, that we are using and we also have like a uh, really strong mechanism for the sliding door so yeah and to also hide it a little bit I use these wooden logs that we also use for the outside barrier I use it for this like middle part uh, also for in the water as you can see here in the corner and to just make it a little more pretty I decided to make it like a uh, 
a doubled wall uh, if you know what I mean and do uh, some more foliage in there so uh, yeah it's just a little more pretty and here we are just doing the last little details uh, with of course uh, the water because somehow it also uh, always needs uh, to be filled with water um, and also then a little mud bath uh, gets a little water area so it doesn't dry out in uh, the heat and in the sun that it is uh, during the day there so it also always uh, stays pretty moist and muddy for the animals so they can roll around in there um, to let them cool and it also acts uh, like a sunblock for them and is also really really good for their skin so that's why they require these mud baths and here we are just building these um, shades. I wasn't really sure how I wanted to make them in the beginning, but I feel like I came up with a pretty nice idea with these um, like sun shades. And then I use uh, these poles um, that are from Leader. I took them from the workshop. She uh, made these really detailed poles and also um, uh, some other sunshades but they were just a little too small um, for my liking because the rhino is a pretty big animal so I just used these African sunshades that are uh, already in the game. And lastly we are just building the little shady um, roof or not shady roof but a roof so that the platform gets some shade uh, for the guests uh, here they can have a wonderful view over the whole habitat and just uh, take a seat and be in the shade and have a nice view for the animals so that was it with this episode i hope you enjoyed it leave a like and a comment and i see you in the next one until then bye guys um.